With me now is Mark Rackley-Gale, who is the manager of the BNZ Specialist Future Hub team. Mark, thanks very much for coming in. I'm actually really pleased that you're here because we haven't seen a bank's perspective, so I'm quite interested in hearing what you've got to share with us. Now, you're with the BNZ, yep. and specifically I want to start by asking about cash settlements. You're over cap, you've been offered a cash settlement. Why does the bank even need to be involved? Yeah, the reason is, um, Vanessa, it is we have um, generally received the in EQC portion of the cash settlement if it's over cap yep. um, prior to the settlement actually coming through the offer to the customer um, and that's a result of prior to the Canterbury earthquakes uh, those funds were sent directly to the insurance company um, but due to the scale and nature of the Canterbury earthquakes it was agreed that those funds could be uh, forwarded to customers to use to reduce debt right. uh, or in interest so, so the banks generally will already be holding that um, and so that needs to be factored into a customer's decision to cash settle. So of course when you're talking about cash settling, and we're talking mm -hmm. about people here of course who've got mortgages on their property, yep. the bank has a vested interest in this because you need to make sure that the value of the property is not diminished. Yeah, that's right. It's um, uh, Again, it's one of those things that uh, in terms of educating people uh, around that reason, um, uh, the bank has lent a certain amount of money against the value of that property. Um, if a customer chooses to cash settle rather than allowing the insurance company to reinstate, um, then that is going to potentially impact on the remaining value of the property. So the bank has to factor that in. So what you're actually worried about is that if you take a cash settlement and you don't actually fix the property, the value of the property is going to drop yep. and therefore your mortgage is worth less, isn't it? Yes, that's okay. right. Right, okay. It's funny because it's actually not rocket science, but it's crucial and it's a, something that a lot of people haven't thought about. That's right. So if you're in a position, well actually firstly, are you getting people who are still, haven't spoken to their banks yet or are still being offered cash settlements for the first time? Yeah, so um, in terms of, uh, we've got people at all ends of the spectrum. So uh, there are some people who still haven't actually received even cash settlements from EQC. Um, you know, prior to that uh, overcap decision uh, and uh, prior to it going to the insurance company for them to be able to proceed. So um, we haven't received, um, you know, people haven't received that money. Um, they haven't even started on that journey um, and yet we've had uh, others that uh, have received an offer from the insurance company um, maybe not aware that the bank uh, needs to approve any cash settlement that's, that's agreed. And um, so the last minute they'll come to the bank and say, can we do this? Um, the bank can actually save uh, people a lot of time and clarify decisions that they need to make early in the piece. Um, right. so, so definitely it is better for people to approach their bank much sooner rather than later. I think, yes, yeah, sooner rather than later, I think that's a really good piece of advice. So if you haven't had a conversation with your bank, and I mean you're talking from a BNZ's point of view, yeah. Yeah. But any bank out there, you need to be initiating those conversations. Yeah, you okay. really should. You know, it's it's a, it's a such a key decision uh, in terms of taking a cash settlement. Uh, even in terms of um, a lot of people, you know, after four years of waiting, um, uh, maybe seeing a, a carrot uh, and a way to get out. Um, so even just having that emotional investment that they have, uh, speaking to somebody who um, maybe has a slightly different perspective, um, slightly more removed. Um, from that decision um, might be a lot more helpful. I mean, getting good advice is just essential to every decision that you need to make in this process. Yep. How does the Hub team help with that, giving that advice? What kind of services are you offering your, your customers? Yep, so we're a specialist um, team dedicated to helping people of Canterbury um, uh, overcome any issues, especially the f uh, complex financial ones arising from the Canterbury earthquakes. So uh, for us, um, we're a service that was set up initially for BNZ customers, uh, but having all the experience is open to non-BNZ customers as well okay. and um, uh, so we receive all EQC insurance settlements um, for uh, every customer that has a mortgage so again a lot of experience in uh, helping people negotiate through this. And of course you're based here, your staff are going through it, you know what we're talking about, yep. you know what it's like to live here. Yep, so, so we've been here from the very beginning, uh, all of the staff are handpicked to, um, to be looking for solutions, not looking for uh, problems. Right. So, um, so you know, that's the nature of the team and um, uh, we also work with others because well as a bank we can help with the financial implications, uh, working with RAS, CTAS and lots of other 
um, uh, even solicitors, um, you know, to provide that right advice so people can make an informed decision is critical. Great. Okay, well, we're going to have some of those support service numbers coming up at the end of this Great. this chat too. Um, can you tell me, of course, with a hub situation like that, every case must be different. Yeah. How are you managing the workload? Are you taking it case by case? Are you slotting similar you know, jobs in together? How does it work? Yeah, every customer is individual. Every situation is unique. Um, everybody's financial situation is different. Um, so again, it's just taking the time, having the knowledge and the expertise, um, and working uh, with that customer uh, to come up with the, the option that's most suitable for them. Uh, I do want to ask you, if we've got a, a little bit more time, I want to talk to you about as-is properties because mm -hmm. they're, they're starting to appear on the market, as-is, where-is, this kind of thing. Are these people that have taken a cash settlement and walked away? How, how are banks involved? What's your perspective on that? Yeah, so this is uh, only BNZ's perspective. So uh, in terms of as-is, where-is, there's a, a high degree of risk with those properties. Yep. As you say, they're damaged. Um, the insurance uh, has been settled, um, so there is generally no insurance available on that property. And um, the biggest uh, issue from a bank's perspective, we don't want to enable someone to put themselves or others at risk. Um, buying a, a property which is badly damaged and could collapse uh, if there you know, was another event. Um, so in terms of as is, whereas properties, as I say, is a high degree of risk. Uh, in talking to customers, because we know there's a high demand as well, there's a lot of interest in as is, whereas properties, it is really crucial um, to make sure again that people are making an informed decision. If they're going to mitigate the risk by demolishing the property, um, maybe just taking the land, building on it again, uh, or even uh, looking at uh, reinstating the property, getting up to an insurable standard again, um, that's something that uh, we would be happy to talk to somebody about. But then of course that all comes back to valuation. Are you therefore paying more for that piece of land than what you should be? Yeah, and um, we have seen uh, the perception of value right. has actually changed even in those as is whereas properties from what, what they were initially um, to the values that uh, they're going for now. Um, it's quite incredible. I think the bottom line is let's be safe mm. and as you said you're treating everything case by case. Yeah. Mark thank you so much for your time that was really enlightening. No, thank you Vanessa. Thanks. If you want free and independent advice about your insurance claim contact the Residential Advisory Service also known as RAS, the Community Law or the Canterbury Insurance Assistance Service. If you or someone you know needs support, social services or help with temporary accommodation, contact the Canterbury Support Line or the Canterbury Earthquake Temporary Accommodation Service. Join us next week for the final episode of Covered when we look at policy entitlements, the main themes addressed throughout the series with Dion Swiggs from Rebuild Christchurch and Marcus Irvine from CanCern. We also follow the experience of a Southern Response customer who hopes that his story will offer hope to other people still going through that rebuild or repair process.